Hello students, by now you are quite aware of what actually the idea of pollution is. It is uh, some undesirable change in the composition, that actual composition of any natural resource. So we had discussed air pollution, we had discussed water pollution. Now we are going to take into account the soil pollution. Soil is an important resource because it is the topmost layer of soil where entire uh, reservoir of resources is present which are taken up by the living beings and uh, specifically plants and that forms the basis of the food chain and food webs which follow and that is basically the basis of an ecosystem. So we are going to study how soil pollution occurs and uh, what are the various types and what are the various control measures, what are the pollutants, major pollutants which cause soil pollution. So first of all we need to know that uh, what is soil pollution, I need not to say that it is any undesirable change in the composition of the soil which was naturally present by any sort of human activity or natural activity. So mostly soil pollution is uh, all thanks to our activities, human activities because other things which ever are uh, occurring at natural levels, they do not have that hazardous effect on the soil composition. So what are the various sources of soil pollution? That is the waste dumps which you would see anywhere around being thrown rampantly here and there and then there would be municipal wastes which you must have seen that uh, there are huge dumps, huge mountains of dumps which are part of municipal waste that also pollute the soil because somewhere or else it is having few components which are not biodegradable. We'll get to that but before that you need to understand that agrochemicals which are a result of uh, agricultural activities that also go into soil and pollute it and then there are uh, mining operations which are being undertaken at a very fast pace in the modern world that also cause soil pollution because quarrying takes large large amount uh, amount of top soil which is taken out and that also destroys the soil composition so these are the four ways four sources in which the soil pollution is occurring through which soil pollution basically occurs now when we talk about waste dumps it is the dumping and municipal waste these are basically when we talk about these we have to make sure that we are very well aware of two types of wastes which are present one is biodegradable waste and the other one is non-biodegradable so the biodegradable and non-biodegradable as the name suggests this would be this could be degraded by the decomposition activity that we study that is an important part of an ecosystem, the biodegradable waste but it should be in controlled amounts otherwise uh, biodegradation of the waste if it is in large amount that is also difficult for the microbes to carry on and then there is non-biodegradable waste for example you have plastics they cannot be biodegraded at any cost they would take at least thousand years to degrade themselves that decomposers would take more than thousand years supposedly you are throwing a polythene bag around you it might take 100 years or 1000 years to degrade so that is a pollutant basically that changes the soil composition so we need to make sure that these wastes both these wastes are widely treated before being introduced into the soil then there are agrochemicals we had studied that how these agrochemicals were polluting water that was through irrigation but at the same time they are added to the soil the pesticides and the insecticides and the fertilizers which as we had discussed they increase the nitrate content and that is responsible for arsenic poisoning in the water groundwater so agrochemicals are also responsible for soil pollution and need not to say mining operations if entire layer of soil is going that is being uh, you know depleted it is amounting to pollution only so these are the various sources of soil pollution now we need to pay attention to what are the control methods for controlling this particular sources how can these sources be controlled in a way so that soil pollution does not occur there are various methods for there is a proper procedure how that soil pollution whatever source of soil pollution is how that could be controlled so we have three three steps that are to be carried out first is that whatever waste it is in the case of waste dumps and municipal waste I'm talking about you need to collect the waste and categorize it into whether it is biodegradable and non-biodegradable then the second point is that we need to pay attention to whatever can be recovered from that waste supposedly you are throwing some plastic bottle or the tetra cans they can be recovered because you might have noticed on the plastic bottles there is a recycling sign and 
other signs which show that they can be recovered you don't just throw the newspaper somebody comes and picks those newspapers they get recycled so there is recovery and the recycling of the solid waste which has to be carried out after the collection and categorization has been done okay and then whatever is left whatever cannot be recycled and reused that has to be disposed of in a safe way so that so that the environment is not deteriorated like if uh, we talk about if we have some waste you have uh, dry leaves in your garden or somewhere you simply burn it so we have to make sure that uh, one sort of disposal one sort of pollution protection does not lead to another protection so if you are protecting the soil from pollution you are not doing any environmental hazard that could be air pollution or water pollution so the safe safest method for the disposal should be taken now uh, what are the various methods for safe disposals is landfill that you dig a pit you fill the waste inside that pit the microbes would work on it and it would be formed into manure over some time so that is landfills you might have observed that in the outskirts of the cities or in the peripheries there are huge landfills where the entire municipal waste is thrown after uh, these two steps that is the landfills then the uh, second way in which we can uh, dispose of the waste huge amount of waste municipal waste as in case of uh, metro cities and all where there is a large amount of population and the waste is enormous over there we can make use of this uh, waste material in the form of bedding material for various roads there is a classic case where uh, a person in bangalore has used the plastic that is polythene uh, uh, these bags the scary bags that we usually throw away those bags are being used for bedding the roads and uh, then whatever is left that could be burnt by two processes one is incineration that is burning the waste material in presence of o2 oxygen would be provided simple burning as in the case of combustion and the second one is pyrolysis where you burn the product in the absence of oxygen so these are the two methods when whatever is left after this that is to be burnt this process is somehow combustion only it would cause environmental pollution some or other pollutants would enter the air but it would not be as simple and as hazardous as in the case of simple burning of the solid waste because there are many toxic fumes which are released if directly any material is burnt all right so these are the various methods in which soil pollution can be controlled otherwise there is always a method for the organic waste whichever is present that comes under the biodegradable waste that can be used for uh, manure pr production in the form of uh, landfill methods where the landfills would soon turn the entire waste into under the activity of decomposition itself the entire waste would be converted into the entire manure and at the same time the sewage that we studied that how sewage treatment plants they also produce some sort of sludge that can also be converted instead of throwing it somewhere that could be converted into organic manure so in this way there are various methods in which soil pollution can be controlled thank you